Viewer discretion is advised. Uh, you want to say what's up to everybody? What's up, everybody? Say good morning. Good morning. Say let's live life. Right. Right, right. What are we going to do today? Work. You going to work? Yeah. You going to make some money? Yeah. Money too. Yeah, I'm going to make some money too. What you need money for? Money too. What do you need money for? Money shoe. <laughs> you need money shoe, I need? What work are you going to do today? Money shoe. Oh, you playing games. I want to make money too. You want to make money too? Yeah. How much money? $44. Dollars. $44? Yeah. Uh, make sure you make $44. You got to help. All right? Tell everybody I'm going to go to work. I'm going to work. Let my daddy do his videos. My daddy do his videos. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Let's live life. Right. Right. You already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life. And we're back. A couple things should have became obvious to you real quick this morning. Number one, my son is at work with me. I believe in taking the kids to work if you can. Teaching them to work. Instilling, you know, all those things that are going to turn them into, you know, to, to young men, young women. I want him to know things ain't free. You got to get out here and grind. I want him to see the other guys work, see me work, and know that nothing comes free in this world. Nothing worth having comes free. So, I got to record while he's outside the car because I don't want him to hear these stories. There will be a time and a place for that. That is, This is not the time, nor the place, nor with him being four years old. So he's out in front of me right now, watching his tablet, banging on a, on a chair with a little stick he found. Secondly, we're not in the Hummer. Mm. Plays a big part in why we didn't do yesterday's video. Mm. So the beginning of this is going to be a little longer than usual because I have to break down yesterday for y'all and some current things that are taking so place. I'm going down the interstate. My homeboy Twain called from prison, talking to him on the phone, normal day, just rolling in the Hummer, headed to the job, which this job happens to be an hour away from our shop, so that's playing a major part in me being able to record also, because so much of my day is spent driving, either to the job or getting materials, yada, 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 I know it's boring. So as I'm going down the interstate, there's a track, the trailer in front of me. Have you ever seen something coming at you on the road, but before you can even notice what it is, you don't went over it? That's what happened. This tractor trailer goes, is sitting in front, and you go driving in front of me, and I'm behind it. And I'm not up on his ass or nothing. I'm just following, just in the traffic. I don't know if he ran over something, something came off his truck, but whatever it was, something comes tumbling from underneath the back of his truck. I mean, as I see it, it's too late to swerve. It goes up beneath my undercarriage. Boom! I hear a loud thunk on the on the bottom of the truck, right? I don't think much of it, because y'all probably thinking what I'm thinking. It's a Hummer. Who cares? It ain't going to hurt nothing. It didn't hit the body. It can't you know, do with so much damage. It hit the undercarriage. Yeah. Never works out like that. So me and Jacob are talking. He's currently at River North. Talking about his upcoming uh, parole hearing. Everything going on with his lawyer and getting the lawyer straight for him and all that, you know, taking care of, making sure we have the right lawyer and trying to get him out of prison after 22 years of a 36 year sentence. Man, it went in at 19 that is now 41, almost 42 years old. <coughs> and my truck starts rumbling, rumbling, rumbling. I mean, it's rumbling hard. I can hear the change, the console rumbling, the doors are speaking, my steering wheels rumbling and vibrating i'm thinking all right they're doing road work that's why my truck's rumbling i was wrong lord knows i was wrong i told him i see yo man I look out my side mirror i see smoke coming out the back of my truck i said damn i think i blew a tire man you got to hold on a second so i get to looking and i see more smoke i said matter of fact man you got to call me back man i think i got a flat tire i said something came off a truck i hit it a couple minutes ago and from the smoke out in the vibration, you would think, all right, I got a flat tire and now I'm just burning rubber, right? I pull over on the shoulder of this interstate. 
and there's barely enough room for me to get off road. It's one of those things where I'm hugging the line so close that I got to wait for all the cars to completely pass before I can hop out real quick and get around to the passenger side of the truck. I make my way around and I look at all four tires and then the tires pop. I touch the inside of the tires. They're not warm. Ain't no wires hanging out, so the tires aren't rubbing. The hell is that noise? What's that vibration? What's that smoke coming from? I look underneath my truck, and I see fluids dripping. So, oh, man. I go to the back of my truck. I look, and the whole back, like the, the hatch of my truck is covered in fluids. The back wheels are covered in fluids. The back sides of my truck are covered in fluids. Whatever hit the bottom of my truck has broke something. I can't sit on the side of the interstate and try to figure this out. I'm waiting for a truck to come by any second and just erase Jay Williams. Let's live life off the map. Because it's not a safe spot. So I get on my Tony Montana stuff, you know. Push it to the limit. I jump in the truck. Take off. Head about another two, three miles to the next exit. Go over this bridge. I get off on Patterson Avenue, go to a little ga a gas station, a little shell station. <coughs> Sorry about the coughing. I call Sean to come get me. Sean Brendel is my foreman, also a good friend of mine, a lifelong friend. Great worker. Shout out to you, Sean Brendel. Sean, true love. He shows up there, and I'm like, man, something's broke on the truck. I don't know what it is. We got fluids going. We're going to figure it out, right? We get to looking. My transmission is cracked. Whatever I ran over bounced up. As it was bouncing when I went over it. And it hit my transmission and completely cracked my transmission case. So I called a tow truck. Came and got my truck. He loaded it up. It was a couple hours before he got there. And he took my truck to the house. In the meantime, I had Sean take me back to the house. And I picked up the charger. So we're going to be in the charger until the truck is fixed. At first, I was freaking out, thinking about how much money this is going to cost. Because y'all know, when dealing with a transmission, it can be anywhere from three grand up to ten grand. Decide, you know, determining, depending on what you're driving. I called around several places, and everywhere I call, it's anywhere. I call it's anywhere between six to eight grand for what's going on with it, right? And that's just them guesstimating. I said, man, that's a lot of money to come out of pocket with. Here's where being a responsible grown-up comes into play. I have full coverage. Comprehensive collision, collision, all that stuff with all of my vehicles. Called my insurance company. Told them everything that happened. Thank God the truck was covered. I got to pay a $500 deductible truck is going into the shop either today or Monday waiting on a record to come get it from my house and take it to a repair shop not far from my house a couple miles and then we're going to go from there but anyways there's more I was in the middle of making yesterday's video and I've been talking to a guy from Sacramento, California another YouTuber Named Dirty Weather 916. And I make sure that I have conversations with people. I know why people were locked up. The backdrop, the backstory on people before I even have a second conversation with them. Just because you can quickly be judged or associated in a negative manner because of what the next man has done. After we talked and we both come to, you know, turn to the fact that I ain't neither one of us got no crazy charges. You you know, I'm almost at a quarter million subs. I would have been exposed. I don't have no fraudulent charges. I'm not a fraudulent dude. Neither does dirt. Dirty weather, right? So I'm in the middle of making my video yesterday and he calls me and he said, look, I got the bakery coming on at 10 o'clock. And the bakery is a live session that he does. where pretty much different dudes come on. And they just chop it up. I said, word. He's like, you know, if you'd like to come on, you're more than welcome. I'm thinking I need to do my video for my people. But at the same time, Jay, show some love. 
It's not a bad thing to get out here and network, to deal with other guys. You know, you need to start doing more of that. You need to show this the people that watch the subs, the YouTube community, that not all of us are beefing. We can get along. So I went on there, chopped it up with him. Shout out to Dirty Weather 916. I'm going to put a link in today's video for, you know, where that, that video can be found. It's actually on his girl's page, Drina916. Look in the, in the, you know, the title for the description for the video. Also, I'm put a link to Dirty Weather 916. Make sure you go check that brother out. Subscribe. He got struck down on the copyright thing right now. So he's in timeout. So he can't post his video. So he's currently, he can't post to his channel. He's currently posting to his girls. Now, before we move forward with me, and I know this is a long intro, but I have to get into yesterday. Before we move forward into me dealing with other YouTubers and other guys, I want to make something clear to y'all real quick. If you don't like somebody, that's fine. If this man I know and this man don't I know don't like each other, that's fine. Unless I have an issue with one of the two on my own, I don't pick sides in the matter. So if you see me on camera with somebody, <clears throat> and for whatever reason you don't like them or somebody you watch doesn't like them, always remember that's between them. That has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with me. So us real ones, we're going to keep it moving. Um, met a bunch of different cool dudes yesterday during that during that live. Shout out Texas Prison Stories, Tim Snow. Got to know him a little bit. Chop it up with him. Nate Dog 916 uh, You know, dirt, all the different dudes, man. And it was, uh, it, it was cool to say the least, man. It's one of the first times I've went on somebody else's channel not the first time but one of the first times that i've went on somebody else's channel and did something like that definitely the first time i've sat down on camera and talked to that many people in a live i enjoyed it i look forward to doing more of it might have more dudes on my channel and we'll do the same so after that seven minute and 47 second intro let's get into the reason for today's videos Scariest thing I saw while incarcerated. And this was more along the lines of one of those things I didn't, I seen the aftermath of. I heard every single part of it. And that's what makes it so scary. Is in the moments that you hear something like this going on and you just feel completely helpless or defenseless or you just want to cover your ears like i can't believe this is taking place man that's what we're gonna get into today scariest things i saw or dealt with while locked up i know i've seen it and i know i've lived it so let's relive it now keep an open mind with today's story on why things happen the way they happened and why somebody else would feel it's their place to do what they did. Also, keep in mind, this was 20 plus years ago when this actually happened. So let's take that trip down memory lane, huh? Deal with those bad memories. Philadelphia, PA. A city of brotherly love. A city of brotherly slugs. A place where... A lot of people don't go on vacation. Let's just keep it funky, keep it real. Philly's not a place you're going to go on vacation. Philly's a place you really only go if you know somebody. Dudes don't just go to Philly and just walk around the streets unless they're going there to try to get high, going to Kensington or something. But for the most part, dudes don't just go to Philly. I'm out there. I get jammed up. I get locked up. Something happens. They run up on us. They get me, they run my name, comes back, I got warrants. Back into the lockup I go. I start off in the district, I go from there. Back to CSCF I've talked about before. From there I go next door to the House of Corrections. The House of Corrections is now shut down, thank God. Very, very old place. Very old jail, old prison. 
And it was built by Quakers. And Quakers at the time, the guys that built this place, were short. So the cell doors that you go in are very short. You actually have to duck down to keep from hitting your head where the top of the door is. I'm 5'9", five 5'10", five and a pair of Timberlands. And I got to duck down to get inside the cell. There's paint peeling everywhere all around you. Constantly smells like old, like just like old mop buckets. Like that's just a smell. It's a long tier, straight down, maybe, maybe a hundred feet. Ten foot wide. Cells on both sides. Some little tables in the middle. Showers all the way at the front. There's a little guard desk all the way at the front. There's a TV about halfway down the tier, hanging on the wall. We got a lot of different dudes in there at this time. A lot of dudes with, uh, to say the least, violent charges, man. You got a lot of dudes that have been in there for a while, waiting to be shipped off to prison, waiting to go to receiving at Camp Hill. You got guys that are steadily fighting cases. Then you got guys that are coming and going. Guys getting out on bail, new guys coming in. Guys going to prison, new guys coming in. So it's constantly rotating, but you got a certain select few of us that have been in there, you know, quite a while. We ain't going nowhere until this is over with. We don't have no bail. I didn't have no bail. We get a new guy in. This is a young guy, man. Maybe 20, 21 years old. Little street dude. Not loud. Don't do a whole lot. Got some little like makeshift bullshit tattoos on him. You can see he got over time. Nothing to brag about. Like pluck work. And he starts off up cell up in the front in like cell three. A couple cells over from the pod boss. Dude, he's in a cell with that after a couple days. And I when you get to the end of the story, I'm I'm gonna assume that's why he kicked him out, you'll you'll realize. Dude, he's in a cell with for a couple days, kicks him out of the cell. You say, how you gonna kick somebody out your cell? This ain't your home. That cell is your home. And you're not gonna sell up or live with nobody you can't stand. Three cells down from me, there's a dude that's probably pushing 50 years old. Maybe 47, 48, but 50 at the oldest. I know for fact, I know the man's name and everything, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna speak on his name. The man was getting ready to do his third prison bid. Career criminal. Had been his first bid. Early on in life as a juvenile was a murder charge. He got out on that. And it wasn't just a blatant murder. It was one of the things where him and somebody else had beef. And his crew and their crew were going at it. And they got to popping shots back and forth. And he killed one of the dudes. So he went away for that at a young age. He came back. Got caught up in a robbery, home invasion, abduction, kidnapping. Went away for that. And now was back in on some guns, drug charges, and a robbery charge, waiting to go to prison. That's the guy they insist on putting this young guy in a cell with. This is a man that has been in prison since prison was, and prison's no playground today, but in the years he was in prison, prison was no playground. Prison was a place that you die Real quick, if you don't conduct yourself the right way. Prison rape was real rampant at this point because homosexuality hadn't yet come to light like that or hadn't been as accepted as it is in today's world. So men were, they seen it, they wanted, they're going to take that. You better hope you can fight and defend yourself or somebody's going to take your cheeks, right? Put the young dude in the cell with this guy. He was extremely extremely violent most people on the tier tried to avoid him when it came to any type of violence any sort of violence just because of his record and what he was known for doing a couple other dudes in there that knew him from the streets and they would tell stories when he wasn't around about him and things that he did that he wasn't locked up for that let you know how you mess with a killer man this ain't a dude that's going to argue with you or play these little games with you. This is a man that will take your ass up out of here. Probably going to prison for the rest of his life for these charges he got now on his third trip back. He ain't really got much to lose. He goes on in, puts his stuff up. Everything seems kosher. 
Now, the duties in the cell where I told you about all the backdrop on, he don't do a whole lot of talking to people. He's always kind of got that face that always at all points of time tells you don't mess with me. Just even when he's sitting out there watching TV, he'll just be just got that resting bitch face, right? Him and the young dude get to arguing in front of us all one day. And that we're getting ready to lock down. And it's the day that everything happened. And he's telling the young dude. He, I guess he was in there using the bathroom. And had the door shut. And the young dude got the door opened. And everybody seen him sitting on the toilet. So he got all pissed off about this. You ain't got no respect. You need to check to make sure somebody using the bathroom. For you open the door. You just open the door. Everybody just. I'm sitting there shitting. Everybody seeing me. Like you ain't got no sense. Why they always put these little punks in the cell with me. A young dude's just standing there, not really saying that. Just kind of taking it like, man, I don't want to beef with this dude. This ain't the dude you beef with. It only gets worse from here. Later that night, I'm dead asleep. Passed out my bunk. And it's not a bunk, it's a slab. I'm passed out on my mat. And I hear yelling. And it gets quiet on the tear at night. Dead quiet. So any little noises are going to wake you up. You're used to hearing... Chow, cow time. So whenever you hear a loud noise in the middle of the night, you're automatically programmed to wake up and look around. I hear yelling. Got to be probably 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. I realized real quick, it's the old head. I ain't going to call him an old head. It's dude down there that I told you got all these crazy charges and robberies and stuff. Snapping on a young boy again in the middle of the night. And I hear him telling him, You think a motherfucker don't know what you ain't here for? You think we don't know you ain't here for fucking with those kids? Yeah, you got the right one now. They put you in the right one. They put you with the right one. Like, they put you in a cell with Mr. Don't Give a Fuck. How'd you like it if somebody did something like that to you? That's the first time I ever really hear this dude speak, other than when he was telling the guards to move him. And a little bit of arguing he did that day. And he's telling the dude, I guess he gets his feelings. Man, you don't know what you're talking about, blah, blah, blah. It's a bunch of bullshit. Dude's not trying to hear nothing he's got to say. Who you basing up on? You better sit your little punk ass down. So now you assume the dude stood up or whatever. He's like, oh, you really want to do it? Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the talking stops and you hear it go to straight fighting. I just woke up out of my sleep. To this this chaos, to this yelling, to these these two going back and forth, and now they're down there fighting. It does not take a man with a brain to understand the dude is gonna do whatever he wants to do to that young boy down there in that cell. Young boy can't defend himself. That young boy ain't got a snowball's chance in hell against this man. This man is a savage. And I don't care what this dude did on the streets, if he toted pistols, if he had bodies, whatever. He wasn't, you know, like I told you, everybody's a gangster till a gangster shows up. Everybody's a killer till a killer shows up. This man was a killer. This man was a gangster. He was the definition of a convict and someone you didn't want no problem. No type of smoke with no pressure. We hear it go to the fighting, straight from the... The man getting ready to say something. Do, 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 do. And he's down there and he's he's going at it. You hear the, you know, the sounds of their feet hitting the floor. I don't hear no sneakers, no shower shoes, but you can hear the pop, 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 pop of them tussling back and forth. And you can hear him slamming his young boy all over the room. And this goes on for upwards of probably two minutes. Two minutes, you say. That's not long. Two minutes is a lifetime when you are fighting for your life or you're fighting somebody in general in a closed confined space like that two minutes feels like an eternity it stops for a second and i, I hear the young guy man you got it you got it man you got it you got it what you mean i got it shit ain't over shit ain't sweet you think shit's sweet this is when i knew things were gonna take a turn if you'll call it for the worse this is when that feeling i told you about the other day set in on me that sickening feeling in your stomach, that sweaty, pasty feeling in your body, that feeling of confusion, of a haze, of a, is this a dream? This can't be real. That feeling of, God, I just want to go home. I miss my family. I'm sorry. That feeling of real fear kicks in. 
And I wasn't even dealing with what this man was dealing with. I wasn't even in that cell. And what took place next shook me to my core. It cut through me like a Gensu knife. Like it actually, I could feel it cut the atmosphere of my soul as it was taking place. Dude's telling dude, all right, man, you got it, you got it. It's over, it's over. And the fighting stops and we hear dude telling the fuck you mean it's over? Ain't shit over. It's over. And I say it's over. Let's see how you like the little shit. You little, let's see how you like what you did, you little bitch. Come here. Come here. And you can hear now that it's went from fighting to more or less squirming and dude trying to get away from him. Yeah, the young dude. What are you doing, man? Hey, stop, man. Hey, CO, help. Help, help me. Help. He starts screaming for help. 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 And then it goes from screaming for help to like screaming bloody murder and you're hearing dude like you can you can hear that dude's got his hand over the young boy's mouth and he's trying to muffle him telling him the fuck shut up bitch take it take it take it the boy's screaming and crying at the same time this would take place for a while this is an ordeal that it felt like an eternity it may have only been five minutes six minutes seven minutes but in my mind the scream still echo and everything that I heard that night still plays over so vividly and just, it was, it was real. It was, it's something you'll never shake. For minutes and minutes and minutes, this young boy was screaming and crying, screaming and crying. You could hear a dude saying, shut the fuck up. And every now and then you'd, you'd hear him pull his hand away from his mouth because then you could hear the boy yell and then you hear him like smack him or, or hit him. And you can hear the young boy moaning and crying and screaming. If this is too graphic, this is the point where you turn off because it only gets worse. Eventually it stops and you can still hear the boy crying. You don't hear the man saying nothing no more. You don't hear no more tussling, no more noise. You just hear this sob coming from three cells down. Like a grown man like crying himself to sleep. Over his first heartache. You know the first time somebody ever broke your heart. And you, <laughs> or you got whooped by your parents. <laughs> you do that. That's all we heard man. And I'm standing at my door. Looking out at the dude in the cell across from me. And as all this was taking place. Neither one of us to make eye contact. We're kind of just like. Looking down and. Looking side to side. But not really looking into each other's face. Because everybody's awake at this point. And we all hear it right. And we're like. Man, what in the f what am I dealing with, man? What have I got myself into? Lord, I'm so sorry. Please let me go home. I'm sorry. Next morning rolls around. They do count and they do chow. And I don't know what I expected. I'm not going to go down there. I don't live down there, so I have no reason down there. In jail and in prison, you don't look in the next man's cell. Looking in the next man's cell is the equivalent of walking up to somebody's house and peeking in their window. You don't look in there. You ain't got nothing in there. Nothing belongs to you in there. If you ain't got a homeboy in there, you have no purpose there. You stay from over there. I expected this to reach the guards in them's ear. This is something they have to act on. This isn't just a fight taking place. Something's got to be done. I more or less thought it would be the young dude that would go tell. Or maybe somebody else, even though snitching is not a real common thing in Philadelphia. It will get you hurt real fast for telling or talking on what the next man has done nobody told got hot in here I had to turn the AC on so all of us are going to eat breakfast come out of our cells get our trays sit down and start eating and there's just an awkward silence after a night like that takes place there's just dudes the more or less just eating their food just waking up trying to still process the stuff they heard in the middle of the night you're more or less not going through your normal routine. You, ain't, you don't hear nobody laughing, nobody joking, nobody speaking. And the dude that did this is sitting at one of the tables just eating his tray. Like it's another morning. Like like we didn't all hear this. Like everybody doesn't know what he did in the middle of the, last, you know, middle of the night last night. Young boy ain't came out to sell. He's still in the cell. We all finished. Take the trays up to the front to collect the trays. Take the trays off. Old dude goes in his cell. A little while later, maybe around 10.30 in the morning, he goes up to the front and tells him, y'all gonna need to get medical in here and get that little piece of shit out of my cell. 
and take him up out of here. And I know y'all probably gonna lock me up. So I've already got my shit packed and ready to go. And it was a younger guard on that day. And dude's like, what are you talking about, man? He's like, I messed the little young boy up, the little sex offender dude y'all put in the cell with me last night. Yeah, I put him through the ring. I did it. You know, I right? probably ain't never going home, so shit don't matter. Y'all need to come get him out of my cell. He ain't gonna lay up in the cell, bleeding all day, stinking like he stinks. Y'all need to come get him, and I'm guessing y'all gonna take me up out of here too. Do whatever you gotta do, but y'all need to do it and get him out of the cell before I go down there and, and do something else to him. I don't even wanna go in that cell with him in there. You could have seen the look on the guard's face. The guard probably never in his life, I'd never seen anybody go to anybody at that point to a guard and say, hey, I just committed a very heinous crime. There's a man down there bleeding from places he shouldn't be bleeding from that needs medical attention and y'all can go ahead and lock me up and press street charges, whatever, I don't care. It's exactly to sum it up what he told him. They tell, he they tells him, hold on, I need to call some more people, man. So he calls in some more guards and they come in and the guard tells him, tell him what you told me. And he starts talking and the, the one man that's in more or less in charge of everybody Ask him, what cell do you sleep in? And he tells him, and the guy goes ahead and walks down the tier to the cell. Meanwhile, he's standing there telling these guards, quite a few of them now, four or five of them, the same thing he just told the first guard. Like I said, it's not a lot of space in this, in this pod, maybe a 10-foot space with a desk sitting there at the very front, and then the bars. I hear the guy at the back. I'm sitting at the, you know, towards the front talking to one of my homeboys now. Like I said, it's later on in the morning. And when this dude started talking, he got quiet. Not that everybody gets nosy, you just stay alert and just shut up. Just see what's going on. I, I watch him interacting with the guards up there. And the one guard that's in charge of everybody walks by me. Goes back to the cell to check on this, this young man. Tells the other guards, lock him up, put him in handcuffs, put him in handcuffs, call medical, call medical, call medical, right? I don't like talking about this shit. So they put him in handcuffs, let him up out of there immediately. Medical staff comes running in, a bunch more guards come running in. By now they've told us all lock down, get in your cells. We all go back in our cells. And me and my celly, we're both standing at the door, looking out. Everybody on the tier standing at the door, looking out. You got my face here and my celly's face below me. We're both looking out the door, seeing what's going on. We see him help the young man walk up out the pod and they've done their best to dress him and they let him off when he was limping and his face was all knotted up and he was bruised and beat up and he had the most terrible, terrible walk as they were walking him up out of there just making all these noises of agony and still crying as they were leading him off the cell block and down the tier, right? So they tell the guard up front, keep that cell door locked don't let anybody go in that cell. If you open that cell, you will be fired. Do you understand me? By no means is anything to be touched in there. It's a crime scene. You leave it as it is. Okay, okay, okay. I'm not going to open it. No sooner they leave out, we start yelling, hey, open the doors, man. What y'all got us locked in for? Y'all handle that shit. Open the door, let us out. They pop the cells. Now, we're all curious as to what transpired in this cell we know what transpired we heard the noises the grunts the moans the crying the punching we go down in the cell and at first it's so many dudes i know what they see before i even get there because they're all talking about it oh you see that oh that's disgusting man i can't that oh hell no nah. dude is wild the boy crazy right so i'd heard everything before i actually got a chance to glimpse in the cell the crowd kind of splits up. Dudes walk off like, yo, that shit's wild. Son, like, crazy, man. I can't believe this dude. Straight, you know what I mean? A real savage. I look in the cell and there's blood all over the floor. There is human waste on the floor smeared in with the blood. We thought that he had violated the young man in a sense of pleasure or whatever you want to call it. Until we looked in the cell. Laying there in the floor was a shampoo bottle, a VO5 shampoo bottle. That didn't have much shampoo left in it, but had a whole lot of other stuff in it that belonged inside that young man. 
the man beat the boy up, stripped his clothes off, and violated him with a shampoo bottle. Held him on the floor and just did what he wanted to him with that shampoo bottle. I know for some people this was probably hard to listen to. It was the easiest story in the world for me to tell. I don't enjoy telling stories like this. But I hope that it'll scare someone straight or hit the right ears and keep one of you little young dudes or females that are going down the wrong road from ever having to experience something like that. When I looked in the cell that day and seen, I wasn't ready for it. Like, it churned my stomach. And once again, without me showing anybody, it scared the hell out of me. Bottom line is... You end up in a cell with somebody crazy like that, that wants to do something to you. If they want to do it, they're going to do it. That was a perfect, perfect example. That boy fought with everything he had in him. And at the end of the day, that fight wasn't enough. The man went ahead and did what he wanted to do to him. But I know what I heard that night. And it'll forever stay stuck inside my head. It'll forever be a part of my memory. Now, I don't condone sexual misconduct, child abuse, anybody violating anybody else. I don't condone what that young boy was accused of doing when it comes to children. I don't think there's any place in the world for somebody that would hurt a child like that or do something to a child like that. You don't deserve to exist and breathe the same air as everybody else. The man that did that to him, I don't know if he had ever suffered any type of trauma. Maybe somebody did something to him when he was a kid. Who knows? But for whatever reasons it be, he decided to take it to a point I'd only seen it taken to a handful of times in all my years of doing time. That by far scared me to the depths of what scared can be not because I was scared of him not because I was scared of him doing anything to me but when you sit by and you listen to something like that you can only assume what's going on but you know what's going on it is terrifying it is terrifying to hear another grown man crying and screaming and begging it just puts a knot in your stomach that as you're listening, you're visibly shaking. And if it doesn't shake you, your core, or scare you, or bother you, there's something deep down inside of you that is really wrong. That's one of the things that uh, nightmares are made of. One of the things that I had to listen to and deal with at a young age. One of the things you think that would have scared me straight and kept me from ever coming back, but it didn't. Crazy, crazy world, man. I'm gonna leave my opinion for the most part on what I think out of it, because honestly, it doesn't matter what I think. All that matters is what happened that day. What I do think is that dealing with something like that, hearing that, being there for that whole ordeal, definitely falls in the category of things that scared me the most while I was in prison. Don't know if y'all enjoyed today's story. I know it was graphic. It was a lot to deal with, but I hope that you stuck around for it and that it reached somebody and that somebody is going to listen and that what took place that day and with me retelling what took place that day, that night, it'll save somebody from ever having to hear it, ever having to be around it, and especially ever becoming that person. So on a better note, it is Friday. Friday, Friday, Friday. Payday, payday, payday. You know I got to get this money. You know I got to get the guys paid. Hopefully we're done with this house soon. These long drives stop, everything ends well with the Hummer I plan on doing some more stuff with Dirty Weather and them so y'all make sure y'all go subscribe to Dirty Weather 916 
check out Drina's channel. I'm pretty sure that's where he's going to be posting from for the time being. So if you want to catch it, catch it as it goes up and know about it. I need y'all to jump over on Drina's channel and subscribe. That way y'all can catch him. Check out Nate Dog 916 uh, Texas Prison Stories with Tim Snow. So check these stories out, man. Let's do some networking. So anyways, these jails, institutions, detention centers, these prisons, they're all just crazier worlds inside of this already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep you entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams, Let's Live Life. And to all my real ones, and there are some real ones watching, because y'all still watching me. Man, y'all know how we do. Salute.